transmission register, which is based of the world frame, based of the robot's original you know, X, Y, Z, zero. User frames, you've heard me mention a couple of times, think of a user frame as an individual, in, individual fixture or individual vice in a machine. You know, every vice that you have has its own you know, setup block, your own X, Y, Z uh, origin point. Those are user frames. You can teach you know, certain motion based on user frames. When the user frame changes, you just reteach the location of the user frame and it shifts all the points to that. The home position, the position register, would ignore that. So I'm going to show you how to create a position register. There are two methods. I'm going to show you the proper method. I'm not going to mention uh, how you can utilize an existing point you may already have in order to change it to a position register. So, you want to change it back to teach, please? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a line above these. So I'm going to go next, edit command, and insert. Press enter again just to insert one blank line. Now, you're going to go to uh, an area you haven't really worked with, which is the data button on the teach pendant. You press data and you see all the registers. Registers are like um, PLC inputs if you want to. Places where you can store information. You can keep a count there. You can keep a timer there. You can uh, set speed values there. All kinds of stuff. We're not worried about registers right now. We want to look at the position registers. So under F1 type, you can go down and select position register. Press enter and it shows you all the existing position registers that already exist. That's why this is the proper method to do it if you were to uh, um, simply change the existing position you, wouldn't, you might overwrite something. So here we're going to find a position register that is not used. It's indicated by the asterisk. These comments are um, um, not mandatory. Yeah, they're optional. They're good to use. So we're going to create our own home position here. First of all, you have to have the robot at the position you want to use. Or move it there so that you can utilize the home position. Now I'm going to move it a little bit because I want it to be closer to where the numbers start. So shift, reset, I'm in teach mode, in world. I'm just going to leave it right there. So it's you know, kind of centered above those numbers. I don't know if I can... Yeah, pretty much there. Okay. So I'm just going to leave it there. Now back to the teach pendant. I'm just going to type in a reference name, a comment for it. So press enter, and then we're going to call this, uh, I'm going to abbreviate it, home, and then uh, numbers. I'm going to leave the vowels out. Okay, so this way we know it's the home position for the numbers program. Press enter. Now I'm going to go over and uh, I want to record this position. Just like any other position, either touch up, you have to uh, hold the shift key and then do record. Now you see it's recorded. If you want to look at the position, you can simply press the position key F4, and it will tell you where this point is located. Up, this is the same display you get when you move onto your position number in your program. If you go back to your program to look at them, you will notice that under this UF and UT, UF stands for user frame, UT stands for user tool frame, it would have a number reference. Both of the user frames and tool frames you can specify for different types of tooling uh, or different types of fixtures you might use. When it states F, it means it's using the world frame, the global XYZ zero. 
So now that I have topped this, I say done, edit, go back to my call program. I'm going to insert a point and I can uh, utilize, use any motion command. Then I simply cursor over, go to choice again, and now I'm going to select the PR. So did anyone remember what number I nine, nine. nine, thank you. You <laughs> type in nine, and here your comment comes up. Home numbers. Let's do that at 8% uh, and continues 100. Okay. So now, um, to send it back home after it's done with the last number, I'm going to do the same thing here. Teach a point again. Change it to PR number 9. Same termination. So now what we need to do is we need to go into these individual programs and take out the home positions at the beginning and at the end. We do it for time. I'll do that quick so we can see the change in the program execution. So I'll select SMK7, delete, delete. Select SMK8, delete that guy, look at the like 14 episodes. What's that? I thought that was about 14. Oh, okay. And select again, last program. Again, you did a nice job labeling all these, so we know which ones to delete. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to uh, my call program, do a function aboard all, turn my teach pendant off, have Sean change it to auto mode, do a reset. We're at 100%, so we should be good. Go ahead, Sean. Oh. <laughs> okay, so my joint got to the home position. It's too fast now. Let me just go a 50, do a reset, and try it again. I can start again. So now that I deleted these home positions, you know, going to this at 10% is a little fast. Because now it's not going from the above down to it, it's going from a different position. So a different axis is moved. Therefore, yeah, you have to slow down a little bit. So I'm going to go back to 50, hit a reset, go ahead and start again. I'm going to leave it at 50, so it's going to just run slower, but hopefully it'll just go through. So see how it's shortcutting and going you know, the closest, fastest to do it again? See how much more efficient those moves are in between? And it then goes back to the home position. So this is something 